Time for a dumb man. Junpei's dreams. Now's the time you've all been waiting for. It's obvious who the game's MVP will be. The man who Grand Slam won it in the night, Junpei Iori. All right. <laughs> First off, I'd like to congratulate your team on winning the WBC. Oh, thank you very much. What was going through your mind as you entered that batter's box for the last <laughs> Junpei, come on, man. My you know this is bullshit. Lead my team to victory. Ah, so it's your great focus that led to this result. Still, that was an amazing home run. All I can say is I got lucky with that hit. You only had a 2.75 average? I almost forgot to give the play by play. The ball went a lot farther than I thought it would. I'm very pleased with the result. Oh my god. Oh, you're so modest. No wonder they call you the ace slugger, <laughs> By the way, is there anyone you'd like to dedicate this victory to? Well, <clears throat> I'd like to dedicate that grand slam to my precious girl who's always supported me through His, thick and What is your precious girl? I, I can be a burden on you. I'm not the greatest, but will you marry me? Yasuo Inaba. Shido. Yasuo Inaba. Uh, sorry, sir, but this is the end of the line. Oh, uh, oh, I was dreaming. Oh my god, yes. Who the hell is he daydreaming about? Cheeto? <laughs> is she, the fuck is Cheeto? Ugh, thanks so much for waking me up right at the best part. I step off the train in an unfamiliar station in the countryside with a little resentment towards the station worker. Let's see here. Man, that's a tough thing to make out. How am I supposed to pronounce that? Oh, it's written out beneath the kanji. Oh, it's Yasuo Ina, but wait, where is this? Huh, let's see what the shuttle train schedule is. I check the train schedule and feel myself slipping into despair. Seriously? There aren't any more trains leaving the station? That was the final train for the night? I've really done it now. The great feeling that I'd only had a moment ago withers away at once. What the hell, man? Why'd this happen? Let's see. I worked a full shift at my job today, and the kids had a game after that. If you get a hit, you'll be a hero. Are you gonna try for a home run? It's the afternoon before a long holiday weekend. Normally I'd be busy with my part-time job and top-secret missions, but on days off I transform into an excellent coach for a boys' baseball team. This is our first game in a while, so I want to make sure these kids win somehow. The game's coming to an end, and we're only running a little away from tying up the score. I'm talking with Goryu, our cleanup hitter, who's getting too much of a swap head over his position to actually focus on the game. Even if he could get in a clean hit, I'll never be able to do it like this. Of course I am. You made me the cleanup hitter after all. I'm making this a home run, no matter what. You go. It's your mouth, kid, and you'll scare the ball away. Now listen up. Don't try to act cool. Just play like you normally would. The team's counting on you. Goryu stops boasting and turns toward the bench. The other kids are cheering Goryu on at the top of their lungs. Goro! Keep your eye on the Goro. Up, you can hit it! The pitcher's totally freaked out! See, a hero doesn't just hit homers all the time. Even if you mess up, there's guys behind you waiting to help. Now loosen up and do your best. Gotcha! Gor Goro's face loses the gruff facade he had been wearing and he begins to focus. There we go, that's how it should be. Thanks, Jupe. Hey, you're supposed to call me coach, you screwball. Make sure you stay loose. I finish off by giving a bit of a hard smack on Goro's butt, Goro's butt with my bat before sending him off into the batter's box. Goro keeps his eye on the ball and lands a direct hit, sending the ball flying out past the outfielders. Alright, we're tied. Goro is standing on second base with a huge grin, waving to us. But we ended up losing in the end, and all the kids cried. I cried too, of course. Well, it can't be helped. I did help these kids strengthen their bond together, so I should just leave well enough alone. 
That was so close, guys. You almost won! All right, let's start practicing again tomorrow. Now, I want you all to remember this at least. If you all work together, you'll never be beat. Okay, we're done for today. After the game, I said some final words as their coach. If you all work together, you'll never be beat. And that was that. Man, even I think that's an awesome speech. Oh yeah, thinking back on it now, I'm honestly proud I came up with it. I bet the kids are still carrying that moment around in their heads. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm such an awesome coach. It's really worthwhile volunteering for a kid's team even after working the night shift. Oh my god. That's how it happened. Because I'm still... Because I'm just still underage, I'm not an official member of Mitsuri Senpai's Shadow Operatives, but I've been playing a very active part in some of their investigations. I get sent out from time to time to check on scenes where low-level shadow readings have been detected. Yeah, the missions are pretty plain, but I'm satisfied with them in my own way. Then again, when do I get sent out? Most of the time it's nothing at all. But, just like I told the kids, it's about putting out a consistent effort every day. That goes for anything. It's not like I get these missions every day, so in the meantime, I spend a lot of time at my part-time jobs. Even though it's kids baseball, renting fields and paying for rides to get to away games get surprisingly expensive. I gave up on that dream, but I love teaching baseball to kids. It's really fun. Man, it's like I'm finally starting to enjoy my youth after all this time. Oh, crap. I'm starting to feel sleepy. Of course. And out goes Junpei. And that leads to where I am right now. Not only did I completely miss my stop, but I can't even get back home. I'm in a tight squeeze here. How did I just fall asleep like that? I can't believe I slept through so many stops either. Seriously. And no one even tried to wake you up? Is it Yukari about to call him or something? I decided to leave the station for the time being. There's some basic vending machines outside and nothing else. It's actually kind of impressive. Crap, this is real bad. If something doesn't happen soon, it looks like I'm going to end up sleeping outside. What the heck am I going to do now? I guess I better call somebody and hope. I pull up my phone to call up anyone I can think of so I can get a ride out of here, but surprise, it's not on. I pray that the battery didn't die while I was on the train and hold the power button, and it turns on. No, the battery's in the red, I might not be able to make a single call at this point. Things never turn out well when they're this bad, but suddenly my ringtone echoes out in this empty place. Oh. Hello? Finally! Hey, Junpei, what were you doing? I've been calling you this whole time. It's Yukatan. How long has she been trying to call me? Maybe she got dumped by her boyfriend and needs a shoulder to cry on or something. Wait, does she even have a boyfriend? She sounds really pissed for some reason, but meh. It's, she's almost always like this after all. That's true. The most important thing right now is charging this phone. Oh, hey, Yucatan. Uh, can we uh, not talk about that now? My battery's about to die. Hey, uh, what's that noise in the background? It's super loud. Uh, your phone's about to die? What's wrong with you? Mitsuru Senpai, Akihiko, Fuka, and Igis have gone missing. We're in a helicopter to find them. Uh, they're missing? Uh, a helicopter? That's We've right. We've looked in tons of places for them, but we can't find them. Anyway, where are you right now, Junpei? Hold on a second. This doesn't make any sense at all. Mitsuru Senpai and the others went missing, and now Yukatan's in a helicopter trying to find them? This is too much information all at once. I turn around to check the name of the station again. Um, somewhere called Yasuina something? I fell asleep on the train and missed my stop, and now I'm stuck out in the boonies. <laughs> You're at Yasuo Inaba Station? Why? Huh? Why is she so surprised? I don't even know why I'm here. 
Okay, fine. It's because I slept through this, my stop. Crap, uh, Yucatan, the battery's going. Uh, fine, just wait there. We'll come get you. I'm with Cancun and Korotan, and we've got Labras here too. She's Igus' sister. Huh? What was that? La who? Well, whatever. I I'll just find a convenience store and. Uh... And out goes the phone. The phone died. I consider what I should do now. But then again, I'm worried about Mitsui Senpai too. I'll just have to buy a cheap charger at a gas station or something and call Yukatan back. This may be out in the boonies, but there's got to be a convenience store open around here. I start walking along the road in search of an open store. After walking for some time, I finally see a familiar lighted sign out in the distance. Nice, just what I wanted. I'm starving too, so maybe I should get myself something to eat. Finally, with some relief over finding a store, my step grows lighter. That's when the lights ahead suddenly go out. Don't tell me they're closed. What kind of convenience store isn't open 24-7 these days? No, that's not right. It's not just a convenience store. All the street lights and lights in the houses have all gone out as well. And somehow the people that I saw inside the store have all vanished too. Even more strange, it didn't get pitch black out. Everything's illuminated in a hazy red light. Is this fog? What the hell? There's something familiar about the sight of this town suddenly falling silent. It's hard to call it nostalgic, but it's just like that crazy thing that should have stopped three years ago. The dark hour. Talk about deja vu. The first time I experienced the dark hour back then, I was in a convenience store. Akiko Senpai rescued me that time. Oh, there you are, Junpei. A voice from behind me makes me turn around, and I see a girl dressed all in pink. Is that Yukatan? What's gotten into her? She's dressed rather odd, but there's no mistaking her voice. Yukatan stops a short distance away from me and glares. She looks pissed. Is it because I left the station after she told me to wait there? Uh, even then, she seems way too angry. It's probably hey, a shadow. Hey, uh, I'm making an effort at least, so... But hey, Mitsuru Senpai's gone missing? What's going on? <sighs> Damn, she's really pissed. It's a shadow, it has to be. Steady, Junpei. Okay, when you're pitched into a real hard case, you need to throw outside the strike zone just to test the waters. Throw them off their game and see how they react, right? Yeah, I'm a genius. So, uh, you look great, huh? Is that your, uh, feather pink outfit? Are you doing an autograph tour out here? Come meet the feather men. <laughs> I try to throw my best curveball, but she still looks just as mad. Oh, crap. You never shut up, do you? You're nothing but a minor character. A mook. A minion. A loser. Just die and let the world have your body back? Jesus. Yeah, that's a shadow. Hey, what? Aren't you being crueler than usual? Ugh. It's time for your punishment. Bring, Bring on, on the, the ring. ring! Yes. The Bring on the Ring. Yukatan suddenly raises one hand as she delivers that cheesy line. With that, four red pillars fall from the sky and stab into the ground around us, forming a fighting ring. I don't know what's going on, but this suddenly feels really dangerous. I place my bag on the ground. I then pull out my favorite bat and take a cautious stance. <laughs> you're a quick learner for an idiot. No wonder you're a member of the Shadow Operatives. I look around in search of the source of that voice and see a television dangling from a telephone pole with a... What is that? A round body, a doofy hat, a cape, and a cane. Is this some local station cartoon mascot that I don't know about? He's saying something about a General Teddy. What? Is that his name? Why would a TV be hanging from a pole like that? Who the hell are you? I don't know what's going on, so you better explain yourself. If this is some prank show, it's not funny. You really are a yak, you idiot. Now let's begin Operation World Destruction. I mean... The one-on-one -on -one P1 climate!